Hello. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? Can you hear me? Oh, I'm muted, so I, I can hear you. I'm here now. <laughs> Do you both, can you both share your screen? Let's try. Oh, nope, I cannot. Yeah. Anne, yeah. I think Anne will be the only one needing to share a screen. Okay. It's true. Who can share? Oh. So yeah, you guys are panelists. You can share. Okay. Try it now. See what happens. See what happens. Oh, it lets me. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. So now I need to get my, I will share my screen at the beginning too, but then sure. you should be able to take over from me. I just got to find the thing I'm sharing. <laughs> I thought I had it pulled up. Okay. There it is. Um, let me see. Okay, we're going to do a, a, an icebreaker at the beginning while I introduce you guys and have people pick um, beach or mountains for their vacation. I feel like vacation season is among us. Sure. So I'm in vacation mode, even though sure. I just got home from a vacation a couple of weeks ago, I'm already ready to go on another one. Um, okay, that. so I will start at noon. and. Well I'll do very brief, you know, your intro, I'll read your bios, you know, do the, tell people where they can put, oh my gosh, and I have the wrong uh, script up. That would have been embarrassing. Just for you, not for us. Oh my God. <laughs> it's for a thing I've been working on. Oh, here it is. Okay. I had it just minimized. It's for a, a webinar that's not even until August. <laughs> I was working on it this morning and so okay let's see I do have to warn you guys that I have a sick four-year-old in the next room and he's been throwing up like every hour so he just threw up like five minutes ago so I well, think hopefully I, we can get this in before his next I think I'll be <laughs> And Brian had offered my boss to take over, but we are interviewing for a position. And so every, the rest of our staff is in interviews. Oh, like, okay. Well, you, you know, I mean, if you need to go on bar patrol, we'll just keep going. So. <laughs> I just keep checking on him, make sure he's okay, but he's four and he doesn't get it at all. So right. at the last minute, he's just like, but I'm like, dang. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's fun. Um, and my husband's boss's boss's boss happens to be here today. And so he was like, I have to leave. I was like, no, I get it. I get it. <clears throat> it's all good. We've done plenty of webinars. We don't, I mean, we love having you here, but we don't need you. Okay. I love to hear that because I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to give him the heads up, but you guys are obviously the priority for this hour, but if he does come and throw up on my lap. Oh no, I think vomit's the priority. So Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Of all I days. Also, yes. I okay. also have a four year old. Oh, you get it then. And my one year old was also up all night last night. So <gasps> Good. we weren't throwing up, but just randomly screaming and refusing to be held or refusing to lay down. <laughs> so you well, know. Well, right. in your near future then actually. It it might be. He was, yeah. Don't like you think they, they act he does off fever. sometimes right before they get sick? They like start to act yeah. weird. Because yesterday he was being, pardon my language, he was being a little shit all day yesterday. I was like, what is wrong with you? Stop. And now I get it. He probably was Felt terrible. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I think we'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. We're going. And so it's Woi, Woi Chu. Yep. Woi Chu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why too? I have been practicing that a ridiculous amount, and I'll probably ah. still mess up. Yeah, and again, I'm totally fine if you don't want to say last oh. names. I just also wanted to let you know what it was if you felt so inclined. Why too? I can do it. Yep. Why too? Yep. Much easier to say than to spell. 
I'm with you on that, but it was like, and it was like, you were reading my mind. I was like, I wonder if I could just say there. Yeah. Me. It just seemed mean to just send that like, oh, good luck with that. <laughs> Try pronouncing this. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, I'll start right at noon, but I'll do the little brief introduction stuff. Give some people time. Um, we did have over a hundred people register for this, Cool. but we only have room for a hundred in the zoom. Oh. And I'm assuming some people registered to get the recording later. Right. Sure. Sure. No, so ho hopefully it doesn't bounce anyone out. Um, but that's a good problem to have, I guess. Like a club that's too full and they can't let anyone. Yeah, exclusive club. <laughs> that's what we are today. Um, okay, yeah, that's about it. And so you guys can feel free to put in the chat what you prefer, Beach or Mountains, as well. And I'm actually going to go ahead and pull that up. So I don't know if I told you this, Anne, but um, I don't know if that's not what I want to do. Um, Bobby is no longer with us. Oh no, he died. No, I'm just he oh, I hope he didn't. That was a terrible yeah. joke. If he did die. No, he didn't. He's still with the world. He's just oh, not with MCCA. Um what about your podcast? I know. What about everything? So that's who we're interviewing. We're replacing. We're oh, I see, I see, I see. And I was supposed to be there interviewing as well, and obviously couldn't. Um, but yeah, so I get it's just me doing this. And I know you guys, I don't know if you guys remember from when we recorded the plenary, he, it's much easier when someone's handling all the background stuff to where I could just, I don't have that now. And so I, it's like um, exhausting to have to work two parts of your brain at the same time. It is. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh. So hopefully I can get through this. But at, if at any time, like if it won't let you share the screen after I do this, just, you know, holler at me, you know, I'm not formal. Sure. Okay. For sure. And I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm paying attention to you. I'm just adding one thing to the slide. Okay, and that's okay. why I'm like, I'm not oh. trying to be a rude bitch turning <laughs> no, out that way. I didn't take it that way. Okay. One other question I did want to ask. Do you, I do say to people to feel free to type questions in the chat. Are you guys comfortable oh, sure. with that? And oh, also, absolutely. do you want to pay attention to them or do you want me to stop and tell you, or do you just want to get to them at the end? Um, whatever, like, honestly, like the way my screen is set up, like, cause I have dual monitors, which yeah. I'm not bragging or anything, but well, like, you. so usually the chat ends up over here and I'm trying, I'm talking here. So I don't always notice. So if you do, or Alicia does, we're happy to answer questions during, Okay. or I if I, we just miss them and we'll get them at the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, just, I'll pay, yeah, I'll pay attention. Um, okay. I'm used to from teaching my class in the fall, having to manage the chat and okay. live humans and a Zoom room. So I'm not. Know. So I always want to be sure, so good. Ask, but I will try to pay attention as well. Yeah. Um, but I won't, I won't interrupt you guys. I'll just tell them to put their questions oh, in no. the chat. And, and you're welcome to interrupt, right? If there's something we miss and it seems like, oh, th this probably really should get answered right now. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. We're both very adaptable. Okay. Good deal. Hashtag I'm not. Adaptability. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can be, but I get so nervous for these. Oh my gosh. And I, it's so silly because I'm not doing nothing. You guys are doing everything. I'm just introducing you and I'm a nervous wreck right now. And the puking <laughs> child next door does not help. No, it, you'll be, you'll be okay. You'll make it through this. I'm, oh my gosh. I'm not, I have absolute faith that you'll survive this webinar. I'll survive, but I'm going to pass out afterwards. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I think that's fair. That's fair. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start if you guys are ready. Yeah. Okay. Right, here. here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, before we get started, we'll give a chance to let everyone get in and get settled. Please type in the chat what you prefer, beach or mountains. Uh, we are upon vacation season, or at least in my mind, I've already started to plan a couple of vacations this summer. So that's where my mindset is at. So if you want to, please feel free to type in the chat what you are, beach or mountains. I am both. I don't have a preference. My husband is definitely beach. So we do tend to do that more often, but 
we do go skiing every winter too. So I guess I, I get the best of both worlds. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get and get us started with some introductions. So welcome to the webinar, Supervisor Basics Performance Management 123. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them in the chat feature and we will get to them at the end or maybe during. We just talked about that. Sorry. <laughs> we might get them to them during. We will um, be paying attention. So please type them in the chat and please connect with us today using hashtag MCCA webinar. And we will be sending a recording of this webinar to those that registered today. Our speakers today are Ann Brackett, and here we go, Alicia Wojciu. Wojciu, I did it. <laughs> Ann and Alicia are the co-founders of Strengths University, Gallup Certified Strengths Coaches, and Seasoned Higher Education Supervisors. Through Strengths University, they take a holistic approach in training and coaching supervisors in higher education so they can become more effective, empowered, and less stress. Anne worked in residence life for 20 years until she left campus in 2017 to serve as the Chief Engagement Officer of Strengths University. Anne has a master's degree in education with a student affairs emphasis from Texas Tech University. And Anne, I don't know if you know this, but that is where Brian, my boss, is attending um, school right now to get his doctorate. What? I did not know that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and Alicia has worked in higher education for over 10 years in a variety of areas at residence life, disability services, and academic support. Alicia, that is my background is disability services. I worked for a nonprofit uh, for 10 years that provided services to people with disabilities. So she is currently a lead life coach at Maryville University and the chief education officer of Strengths University. She has a master's degree in social work from UMSL. I will now hand it over to our two presenters. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this time together. Um, Anne will start sharing her screen and- um, I will. <laughs> we will walk through this together. Um, and again, if you have questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll be paying attention to them. Some of them we might get to right away. Um, and if we miss anything, you know, we'll come back at the end. So if there is something you ask and we miss, please feel free to throw it in again. But um, we will be working to pay attention. So we are here for Supervisor Basics, thinking about performance management. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's. Okay, so if you didn't know, there are four main roles of a supervisor, as though you didn't have enough to do, right? So they are, very briefly, Recruitment and hiring, engagement, so employee engagement, employee development, and what we're going to focus on today, performance management. Okay. The problems with performance management. Honestly, I think this is one of the things that is most challenging for supervisors because most of us don't get enough or any training on how to do it. And then when we don't, when we go to others to figure out what to do, they also haven't been trained. So we're just kind of throwing things against the wall to see what sticks. Also, we're kind of in this cycle just because that's been the setup of annual reviews, right? Like we have good intentions. We really wanna help develop our team, grow them, make them more successful, but it really comes down to, oh crap, HR said I have to do these annual reviews. So that's where a lot of this tends to happen, but it's one of the least effective ways to do it. And there's been a lot of research on how just how terrible that system is when you think about performance management and getting that feedback that people really need. Another problem is that we assume a lot. We assume that people should know what they're supposed to do. They should know what we're thinking when we give them a task. They should know whether or not that's acceptable or not acceptable. We don't necessarily verbalize it, but we assume. And finally, feelings. We have our own feelings. Our team has their feelings. And when you go to set expectations, hold people accountable, talk to them about this, that, or the other, we're worried about, well, I don't want them to think that, we don't tr that I don't trust them or I don't wanna hurt their feelings. Maybe there's a lot going on, I shouldn't say anything. There's all these feelings and we don't know how to navigate those. And that just makes another layer 
of difficulty when we're thinking about performance management. Indeed. So when we think about this idea of what are the most expensive mistakes that we can make as leaders, supervisor, supervising and leading others, it really is comes down to these three things um, that encompasses really all of that. So not creating, um, not establishing the expectations. Um, so we're going to talk through that. Um, when folks don't know what is expected of them, it is... Um, a huge problem for everyone. Uh, so first, not creating and establishing that expectation. The second one is not creating the accountability that goes along with those expectations. And then the third one is not continually coaching. And so when we think about, again, how do we wrap our minds around um, performance management, knowing that annual reviews are not necessarily something we can control, but something we have to do. But how do we make that something that isn't a problem, but rather something that we are building to that's already been going on um, as we have been leading our folks. So when we think about the mistakes that we make, it really does boil down to these three, three big pieces. Definitely. And as you can imagine, when we talk about performance management in one, two, three, we wanna do the opposite of those mistakes. We wanna set clear expectations. We want to hold people accountable, and we want to consistently coach people one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what we're going to really focus on today. So we have this lovely introductory slide, but we've already been introduced so fabulously by our host. So I did leave this in, though, because if you haven't already taken your, your strength, the strengths assessment, Clifton Strengths, we highly recommend that. We're not really gonna focus on it a lot today, but it's a super duper, it just takes what we're doing today and really adds a level, adds so much power behind setting expectations, holding people accountable, that coaching piece. And we did wanna share our own top talents with you. So if you haven't taken it, maybe it will pique your interest. And if you have taken it, you would be like, oh my gosh, I have so much in common with Alicia. Or, oh, I wondered why I didn't like Ian. Got it, either way. Okay, so let's just jump in. Number one, expectations. And I have a lovely quote here that Alicia will tell you she didn't really say the quote, but she heard it once and she won't shut up about it. She does, she does say it a lot. And, and it, it's a fantastic quote. The distance between expectations and reality is disappointment. So all those times you were frustrated with your team, possibly with yourself, they didn't do what they were supposed to do, yada, 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 again, back to that assumption idea. If we weren't clear on what we wanted, then what they do is going to be very frustrating for us because, well, it's not what I wanted. Again, even though maybe I didn't say what I wanted, but there's just that, again, emotions are, are healthy parts of our system. Like we think they're weird and sometimes we don't like them because of the way they make us feel, but they're a very important feature that we need to address and they take a lot of energy, which, you know, we need our energy for other things. Okay, Alicia, how do we normally set expectations? Right, so when we're thinking about expectations, I'm sure you all have had um, the experience, you know, we're in a training, um, maybe we are onboarding new folks or something like that, but we're having a training and we sit down and we start talking to each other and these are the expectations that we have of a team, right? Or uh, for those of you, you know, that have worked in res life, right? Thinking about floor meetings at the beginning of the, of the school year, right? Everybody comes together and shares what their expectations are. So those trainings um, are a place where those things get set. And that can be really powerful and really helpful as long as we pair it with the things um, that we mentioned, you know, steps two and three, and we'll continue to get to that. Um, but again, other also places that we think about setting expectations, you know, retreats when we step away from our duties, you know, for a couple hours or a little bit, and we really intentionally think about this. Um, another time where um, expectations get set is when there's a problem, when something has gone wrong, and now we are trying to right the ship um, in whatever, you know, situation that has come up. And so, you know, those, again, are important and powerful and can be really beneficial. But again, the problem is we don't necessarily always take steps two and three that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And then the last one is just the fingers crossed method. Um, and it, that is really just that idea of, well, you know, I 
these people usually do a good job and here's this new thing. And so, you know, fingers crossed, they're going to, you know, I'm just going to assume I'm going to hope that they know what they're supposed to do and that they're going to do it the way that I am thinking about this, right? Thinking about it, either a new initiative or a new project, passing that off to someone. Um, again, just to, taking, not taking that time to really be clear and um, concise and consistent about what you're expecting and also inviting the other person to bring what they can offer to the table. So um, again, a lot of times we don't take that time to do that. So um, oftentimes we set expectations in a way that aren't incredibly helpful, but we're going to talk about how to fix that. For sure. And just again, to nail down, drive home the point of how it's important expectations are and setting clear ones. If you don't have clear expectations, this first bullet point says Q1, Gallup has an engagement survey. And what they've done, unlike a lot of other engagement surveys, which are like hundreds of questions, they've narrowed down the 12 most important things when it comes to employee engagement. So the things that make the biggest impact. And the number one thing is I know what's expected of me at work. And again, this goes back to, you know, us as supervisors, like assuming, well, they have a job description. They could have asked any of these questions at the job interview about what they're supposed to do. Like we had that first meeting that first day and we're like, okay, I gave them a rundown and they didn't ask me about it. But when people don't know what they're supposed to do, it impacts their engagement level. Also, unclear expectations are just stressful for everyone involved. How many of you watch The Office? And if so, have you seen the episode where Jim gets the new supervisor? What's the supervisor's name, Alicia? I always forget. Uh, Charles Minor. Charles Minor. And he's a little intimidated. He hasn't gotten off on a great foot. And Charles asks Jim, can you do a rundown for me? And Jim, not wanting to make the new boss think that he doesn't know what's going on or he's not good at his job, is like, sure, absolutely, I'll work on that for you. Well, the rest of the episode is him wasting his day going from person to person asking, do you know what a rundown is? Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, can you do a rundown? And no one really knew. So he is literally wasting his time and energy figuring it out. And even if you've worked with people for a while and you feel like you kind of know each other, there's still that, if you're not clear, oh, someone loves the office, fantastic. Um, we do too. If you're not clear, that leaves the other person having to interpret what you mean. And because we're so busy, like, oh, I don't wanna go back to my boss, even if I have a great relationship with him or her and say, what did you mean by that? Or what do you want? Because they know you're, you know, you're so busy. So instead, like we have a conversation, we need you to do something. Everybody kind of thinks they kind of know what's going on. And then slowly I'm working on it, I'm going this way. You're thinking about it, it's going this way. And we don't usually check back in with the person. So all of a sudden, hey, do you have that thing done? And you get it and you're like, in your head, this, this is not, and you know, like the employee is proud of here's, here's the rundown. And so you really need to be clear because you're causing more work and more stress on your people when you're unclear. And then it's more stress on you when you get this thing and you're like, well, that's not at all what I wanted, or you need to do X, Y, Z also, you know, it's just a lot of extra steps as opposed to being super clear from the get go, which I guess I've just gone into the wasted energy bullet points as well there. And if you don't set clear expectations, you're basically making accountability impossible for you to do. I mean, people still do it. Like they get mad or frustrated. And so they call someone in and they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. But the person is going, you never told me to do that. Or I didn't understand that was part of it. And then you're, you're, you're damaging that real important relationship between you and the person. So clear expectations, very important. You may have heard it in that sweet pod. <gasps> Somebody listens to our podcast. That's so nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. And oh, and as we're thinking about this, and um, especially in this time, I know that 
I know we're all tired of talking about the pandemic and, you know, if you listen to this way in the future, you're going to be like, what pandemic? Um, But, you know, we have really been faced with having to rethink what we do and how we do it. And now we're being faced with, at least on my team, being faced with returning to on-campus work and how this um, shifts and, you know, what we're getting and what we're expecting from people that have been working virtually for a year, right? Like, what does this return to something? um, What does that look like and how do we manage through that? Um, And so again, thinking about setting this, uh, these expectations, um, being clear and kind, um, as we're talking about in the, in the chat, um, when folks know what you're expecting from them, again, it decreases the amount of stress that they feel Um, as many folks will probably be feeling returning to campus or, you know, if you're already in that process, we're, we're about half and half. And again, thinking about what, what it will look like in the fall when more students come back. back. Um, So really thinking about decreasing that stress for folks and then also decreasing the amount of time that they have to think about um, the amount of time that they have to think about what they're supposed to be doing or how or why. And so when we think about this idea of expectations basics, um, and Anne has switched the uh, sorry, the page I to. That was happen. I'm sorry. I was just gonna put the link to the podcast in the. I forgot how I was sharing this. <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, so again, we think about um, as you're seeing, if if you have the chat pulled up, um, we do have a podcast. It's called My Circus, My Monkeys, um, and through the link out there, so you can get there really easily um, if you're not already listening. Um, we are going through obviously this in you know 45 minutes to an hour today, but the podcast of course is free and really dives deep into more of these topics as well. So um, again, thinking about this idea of expectations, what do we wanna do when we're setting them? We want to be clear, right? We want to um, again, invite that invitation to this is what I would like to see, this is what I'm expecting. Um, and also what can you bring to the table or allowing folks to ask questions so that we are all on the same page. So we wanna be clear. We don't wanna assume that people know, again, what's in our heads, right? The way that we look at the world. Again, if you've taken strengths, you know, or you know, even if you haven't, you know that we all look at the world a little bit differently. We all have different lenses that we view the world that shows up in our work projects and what we're expecting or what we think work should look like. Um, This, you know, do you have any questions? We wanna offer, people the opportunity to ask questions and again contribute to the project Um, but we don't want to only ask it once in that expectation setting we don't want to just leave it there right because if somebody is getting a whole bunch of new information about a new new initiative or a new project or again what this new quote-unquote normal looks like um, just asking people when you're sharing the information do you have any questions same thing on the first day of the job right you're not going to know what questions to ask you don't know what you don't know yet So um, again, if you ask, do you have any questions, make sure that's a conversation. Again, we're gonna continue to talk about how to do that. Um, Expectations should be an ongoing conversation, not a, okay, here's the thing. This is all the things I, as your supervisor, expect you to do with this. See you later, bye, right? It should be a conversation. um, And we wanna have a system. We wanna create a system together to think about, um, we want to put a, um, a system together to think about how do we make sure that we're all staying um, on the same page and that if there is something in the expectation that needs to shift, that we have the opportunity and the, the framework and the system to be able to do that. For sure. And do, 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 here's a lovely, boom, screenshot, boom. Clear is kind. Clear is kind. Now, if you say things in a condescending way, it's less kind. But this idea that, oh, they won't trust me. They'll think I won't trust them if I'm not having these, if I'm having these conversations, that is not true. And I I will add that, you know, if you're just starting to do this with a bunch of people you've already worked with, you know, be transparent, say, hey, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how important it was for us to set clear expectations. So we're going to start doing that versus all of a sudden in a one-on-one or group setting, like, we need to set clear expectations, blah, 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 because then people do feel like, oh God, what did I do? Like I've screwed up something and you know, then the stress goes out of control. So just 
say, hey, I realized how important this is. So let's start doing it so we can decrease our stress, so we can make sure we're on the same page and not waste a lot of energy going down roads that we don't need to. Okay. So if you're at all feeling overwhelmed by now, because like it's stressful, we're all in fight or flight like most of the time. And this hopefully is super helpful for you, but also, oh good, more things to do. That sounds awesome. Thanks, Anna and Alicia. We wanted to have, like, like, of course, podcast free gets into more detail on lots of these topics. But if you want support in helping figure out your systems, going more in depth, walking through developing some of these things to be a more impactful and empowered supervisor, then this summer we've expanded, like we've done the boot camp a couple of times, but it was two crazy days, lots of stuff, again, very overwhelming. So we are stretching that out into June and July in weekly portions with our supervisor summer camp. And it kicks off June 1st, at the end of our time together, we'll go into a little bit more detail about that. But if you're thinking, I love it, but I need more support, we've got you covered. Okay, number two in our one, two, three, accountability. And I love this quote, and should I read it? I guess. The only way we succeed as a group is not simply by following directions, by, but, but in keeping each other accountable for our actions. If we don't have that accountability piece, then there's this thing missing. And we'll, we'll talk about what that thing is in a hot second. Let me press the button again. There we go. Okay, so what are our obstacles to holding people accountable? And I already said, I think that performance management is one of the most challenging pieces for supervisors. But if I had to pick one thing, it's the holding people accountable. It's again, feelings, stories, all of these things happening that just kind of overwhelms us. And when we don't know what to do, most of the time we just do nothing. So again, that idea that Alicia talked about earlier, the fingers crossed method, like, well, I hope they do what they're supposed to do because Lord knows, I don't know what to do if they don't. And I don't want to have to deal with it. I've got too much on my plate already. So hmm, not effective. I mean, it's effective sometimes, but not enough to make it the way to run business. Q9, again, this, this um, account engagement survey that Gallup has. Q9, are your coworkers committed to doing quality work? Now, I know when I was a supervisor, you would have that staff member that wasn't quite doing it, right? Everybody kind of... Well, what does Bruce do all day? I don't know. <laughs> and neither, and I'm a supervisor, problem. And so we get overwhelmed and we're busy, you know, us as supervisors, and we think, well, the nine other people on my staff, they're doing what they need to do. So I do, of course, spend a lot of time feeling bad about myself because I haven't done anything, but also I haven't done anything because I don't know what to do. So it's easier again to do nothing. But what we don't really appreciate, and I definitely did not under. I did not appreciate this when I was in these situations, is that us not acting and holding that person accountable is negatively impacting the rest of our staff. Because I don't know about you, but I've absolutely been on staffs where there was that person, maybe a couple of people who didn't really do what they were supposed to, which meant I kind of had to do some extra work. And at a certain point, I'm like, okay, so let me just get this straight. If you don't do your job, nothing happens. Is that, is that right? All right, cool. So, so I'm going to just go ahead and take a step back. And the longer it happens, the more steps back other people are taking. And again, that engagement goes down. And when we think of engagement, like think of it as that psychological investment in your department, with your students, with your institution. And that going down, not good. Okay, your stories. We talk about this a lot in our trainings. But the stories we have that are running in our heads about, oh, well, Bruce isn't doing his job, but he's been here forever. And so I don't think there's really anything I can do about it. Or if I say something, he's going to be angry and he's going to yell at me and it's just going to make things worse. We have these stories that we think are true, but are they? Usually not. 
But those stories keep us paralyzed and they keep us from doing the things that we know we need to do. So that's something that we, we really spend a lot of time on in our trainings because if you have a story, like we can tell you exactly what you should do to performance management, one, two, three. But if you have stories and things that are holding you back, you're just not gonna do it. I mean, and that's just it. And finally, and this kind of goes with the stories, like if you feel like, well, I'm just not an assertive person, that's also something that's going to keep you from doing the things that you know you need to do. And then all you're doing is wasting a bunch of energy feeling bad about yourself, like, oh, I suck. And also Bruce is still not doing his job. And that's not getting anyone anywhere. It is so challenging, Alicia, you're right. <laughs> okay. Whew. So when we think about how, like, how do we do this, right? How do we hold our team accountable? How do we help Bruce come up to his accountability? You know, how do we, um, you know, show that to the other folks on our team as well? How do we help everybody be on this? And when we think about accountability, a lot of times, the story that goes with accountability is we um, something is wrong and we have to fix it. So we talk about being accountable, but holding people accountable is also an opportunity for celebration and really helps us know the places where people are doing um, exceptional work, right? So if we have done the work to set clear expectations about this is what's expected of you at work, right? This is what's expected in this project. This is where we are headed on this on this thing. When we have that set clear, we can, uh, again, invite others to, to contribute, to share ideas, to test things out, to hopefully make the project or the product or the team better. Um, but if, we, if they don't know where that baseline is, it makes it even more challenging to do that. So again, the, the first thing, setting expectations, being clear and kind about that um, is, is foundational. So that's how we begin this process of helping folks um, and helping um, hold them accountable. Um, another thing is having regular one-on-one -on -one meetings um, with the folks that you supervise. And um, I know I have been in the situation um, with uh, you know, by being supervised by someone that our one-on-ones can look like, okay, we have time on the calendar, um, something else came up, so can we shorten that to like uh, 15, 30 minutes um, and just check in, and then when you show up to the meeting, okay, what do you have for me? Okay, what are these, you know, very tactile, uh, tasky things that are happening? Okay, great, here's the announcements I have for you, and then you go on, right? Um, and sometimes, like that information sharing is an important piece of it, but it's not where we want our one-on-one -on -one meetings to stop. Um, we want our meetings, our one-to-ones to be an opportunity to revisit, right? We talked about creating a system for holding folks, um, for following it through on those expectations. And so one-on-ones uh, one are the time that we can do that, right? We create that system that we talk about the projects that are happening, if there are benchmarks that folks are supposed to be hitting, um, again, we, we do that and we hold our one-to-one -one meetings um, as sacred and important and not the first thing that can come off the list when, um, when things get busy. And I hear you, Michelle, and that is very challenging and hard. Um, one of the things that I have found helpful, we're gonna talk about in a second for the folks that I lead. Um, and actually I have had to do the same thing to uh, manage up to my supervisor um, to help our one-on-ones be more um, efficient and effective as well. And so um, again, one-on-one -on -one meetings, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Um, the other piece of holding folks accountable is being brave and timely. And it is really hard when somebody is not meeting an expectation um, to, uh, to, to follow through on that, right? To have that conversation. It can be challenging. Like Ann was talking about, right? The, that idea of stories. Well, I'm not perfect either. So, you know, I should just give them some grace or this is really hard right now. And, you know, and there is, there's a time and a place for grace um, and to, to, give people some flexibility, but we still have to have that conversation to understand what's happening so that we can really truly support them and not let them um, get off track or, you know, down a bigger hole than they already are. 
We also want to be developmental in these conversations. It's not about degrading people or um, anything like that, but really working to come from a framework of understanding what is happening, how did we get off track, um, what part of the expectation wasn't clear, or you know what is happening, and how do we use this to grow? And then the third piece, especially with folks that aren't doing um, what they're supposed to be doing, is really making a system that you document, right? And so if that means after your one-on-one -on -one meetings, you have an email template that you fill out every time and you send to them, so you're both on the same page. If you both have a running document that they can um, get into, um, just making sure that you document everything. Um, and again, when we think about accountability, a lot of times we think in the negative, but also documenting the places where folks have, have done well, right? They've really met this expectation. They've got all their, um, we deal with early alerts on my team. They've got all their early alerts closed in the appropriate amount of time and they've followed through. Documenting that so that I can praise them, right? And when we think about, again, this idea of annual reviews, they're not incredibly helpful if it's not something that we've been doing all along. And so our, our, our meetings can be um, a really important place for this. Um, yeah, anything else you wanna add, Anne? Um, I would just like to, again, clear is kind. How many of you at your annual, annual review, did your supervisor drop a little, so that thing you did six months ago, that really didn't blah, 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 blah. And you're like, are you serious right now? Like you waited six months to tell me that I did something wrong and or I've been continuously doing something wrong. That is not kind. So again, we have to be brave and timely and like when it happens, address it because you can't, I mean, you can then six months later, bring it up, but it's going to be your failing at that point, not theirs. And, and again, like we get it. We've been in those tricky situations and I've definitely, I've definitely messed up several accountability situations in that very way. But, you know, we're here to, you know, when you know better, you do better. So hopefully that, you know, hopefully we're giving you some different ways to think about things so that it can, even if you have those stories of, oh, I really don't like doing this, like understanding like, but I have to, because if I don't, there's gonna be some negative consequences that are even worse than that 15 minute meeting or that half hour meeting. So, oh, there was a question, what's happening? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, well, we'll get to that at the end. So we don't wanna, we're on a roll or flow or call us butter because we're on a roll. No, okay. All right, too late. Now I've lost everyone. All right, great. Okay, number three. What, number three, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Okay, coaching. And this week's podcast episode is in fact, on coaching. So you can go listen to this right after because of all the that you have. But coaching is unlocking a person's potential to maximize their own performance. Oh, wow. As I whack my elbow on that. Okay. So when we're thinking about coaching, again, we already kind of talked about this, but coaching is very different than the annual review approach, which is, you know, I mean, the annual review, it's like a list of what you did good, what you didn't do so good, boom, boom. It's usually just like HR needs to have it because we need a record and we need something to base raises on, right? But it's not effective. And when you look at the data and Gallup does tons of research on this, millennials and Gen Zers, the thing they want, they don't want a boss, they want a coach. They want someone who's going to help them grow and develop and become all that they can be. You know, and that's a good thing. And when you're thinking about these opportunities, like we've already talked about the scheduled one-on-ones. So making sure those are consistent. And, and really, I, I do want to say like, this is number three, the coaching, but this is where it all really comes together. A well-crafted one-on-one -on -one that's very intentional can hit, like we're talking about performance management, but if you think back to those four main roles, it can hit three of them. It can hit the development piece, it can hit the engagement piece and performance management. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, even though like, oh, it'd be so easy to just not have this one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, you can be so 
effective in that short period of time, it is worth it in the long run. So scheduled meetings are great opportunities. Also those drop by conversations. And I will say, if you're like, oh, people are constantly dropping by and having these conversations, I never get anything done. Once you start having those scheduled meetings, the drop bys are gonna decrease because they don't need them. They know that I'm definitely gonna have time with my supervisor once a week, every other week, depending on you know how many people you supervise and that sort of thing. So they don't feel this need with every dang question or concern to come to your door. You can set those expectations. You know, we teach people how to treat us. And if it's, I know I don't get any quality time with you unless I drop by, then I'm gonna drop by all the time. So, but you can make those meaningful with what we're gonna talk about in a hot second. Also problem solving, like, oh my gosh, I have this student in XYZ element OP. Those are great coaching opportunities. And typically our instinct, I think, as supervisors, because there's this myth that supervisors should be good at everything. And, you know, some of us, there's some, some stories that we have, like, oh, I have to prove myself. I hope they think I deserve this job. So if somebody comes to the story and you're like, oh, I better have a good answer. And even if I have to like, oh, let me get back to you. I still feel like I have to give you an answer versus coaching where you kind of like, hmm, good question. Well, what do you think we should do about it? Or, and we're going to get to this. Well, I don't know why I'm saving it, but there are some questions that you can ask specifically about their strengths to really help, help them reflect. Like, how do you think you're, and they are, da, 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 da. How, are you, how do you think your talents are helping you here? Or how could they help you? And how do you think they're maybe getting in your way? And those are like the two, mo like I, hold, I did a whole two hour session on this for some people at St. Louis University yesterday. And I like really like, really, if you only remember those two questions, you can coach through any situation for reals. Very powerful. So problem solving, drop by convos, typically about pro problems um, and performance improvements. So you have that person that you finally like, Bruce, we got to have a conversation. This is not working out. And we need to either because HR is making you or because you just want to like, we got to figure out how we're going to get you where you need to be. You can use this coaching approach to make it more developmental and put it back on them as opposed to, again, kind of this, this feeling like, well, it's my responsibility to make them do X, Y, Z. It isn't. It's your, ability, it's your responsibility to hold them accountable. And if they choose not to, da, 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 da. but coaching is the best way and your best chance of making that happen. Okay. Yeah, so when we think about, again, how do we use our one-on-ones to be effective, efficient, right? We don't have all the time in the world. We can't meet with these people for hours on end. So how do we make it impactful, right? And that really is by setting an agenda. And the agenda doesn't have to be intense. Um, like I mentioned, uh, one of the tools that has worked for me is having a running agenda where we answer the same questions um, each week. And I expect the folks that I uh, get to supervisor to come prepared. Um, and so really just thinking about reviewing the past, like what's been going on, um, again, touching base on some of those things preparing for the future, what are the things that are coming up? Again, that great place to set the expectation, right? Here's the things that are coming. The reviewing the past also gives that, um, again, creates that system to revisit. Okay, this is what you've been working on. These were the expectations. Where are we at? How's that going, right? What's working, what's not? Um, and then of course, creating developmental opportunities because we, um, I think most of us in higher ed, we believe in the potential of people and we want to help folks grow. And um, a lot of times I think that's what, for me, is the super, uh, the energizing part of being a supervisor, um, but also can be really challenging because there's all the other things to do as well. So how do we do this? Um, we have provided um, a, a sample agenda if you, you know, you'll be getting the slides. Um, and so this is um, very similar to the actual uh, system that I use for my team. Um, and so again, whatever works for you um, to create this, right? And so again, if it's you have the questions and the folks know, oh, I'm going to be prepared and we're going to talk through these questions each week, again, having a running document that they have this and they come prepared. Um, 
another thing that um, again, if your supervisor isn't, um, you know, isn't on this call and, you know, isn't participating in this, it, it can take some courage to also be, to set that expectation up, right? Like, I really want to continue to grow in my role and make sure that I'm doing what is expected of me. So I would really like to bring this agenda um, each week and, and kind of talk through it. That way, if your supervisor isn't in the space where they can wrap their heads around this yet, you can still do this right in a way that works and even if you're not as formal as that having this like prepared for yourself when you head in okay we're gonna i'm gonna want to talk about what has happened in in the past i want to talk about where we're headed and what's going on and if there's something i want some support or development around i'm gonna ask for it right um so this can be used both ways for you supervising someone else or again if you're not getting that from your supervisor being able to use it up um, the other thing that's really important is to check in with your folks. If you create a, an agenda to check in with them about if the questions that you have on there are working for them. Um, one of the folks that I, um, supervisor, um, one of the questions that, um, I had had on there at one point was where are you making progress and, um, where are you making a difference? And for her, those felt too similar and didn't really serve her or help her reflect in a way that was helpful. And so she asked, you know, can I actually change this question to what really challenged you this week? Um, and so of course my answer was yes, that is much more important that we're checking in about the things that matter to you and the places where, you know, where you're being challenged or where you are getting excited. Um, and so again, We've talked about these these one, two, three, right? They really do go together. Um, thinking about setting clear expectations, holding folks accountable, and then continual coaching, right? And and being intentional with your weekly meetings or biweekly, however you have them structured. Um, that is one of the most kind of normalized ways to do that, right? We all have some sort of one-on-one -on -one check in with our supervisor. Um, so Excellent. Um, yes. Yes. And I just put in the chat <clears throat> because I realized I didn't actually put a slide with those powerful questions because we were so focused on just the performance management. I forgot them. Oops. Anyway, but again, remember within here, drop bys, problem solving, whatever, you know, thinking about how are your talents helping you with blank or how could they help you? Like if you're planning like, oh, we're gonna work on your goals. Let's think about how your talents can help you get there. How might they get in your way? And for those of you who don't know a lot about Clifton strengths and, and talents and that sort of thing, when your talents, the things that you're best at become nat most naturally to you, when they show up in a productive way, they're showing up as strengths. When they are not being productive, AKA getting in your way to achieving your goal, they're showing up as weaknesses. So our weaknesses are not necessarily things we're not good at. It's that when we're applying our talents in a way that is not helping us be productive, or if you think about it from a professional development standpoint, you just haven't gotten the right bits of knowledge or skill set to really support your talents, to really make them sing, if you will. So yes, absolutely, cha-cha. Oh, um, Whitney asks, with professional staff, do you have, do you have 30 or 60 minute one-on-ones? Um, I used to do an hour. Alicia, what do you do? Um, so I used to, for my team, I used to do an hour bi-weekly, um, but then I checked in with my team when we went remote and um, because I was reading things about that, you know, communication was different and more important individually um, working remotely. And so I asked my folks what they would want to do. And um, most of them chose a half an hour weekly instead of an hour biweekly. And so um, I think the, I think as long as you're being intentional and coming prepared and your folks are coming prepared and knowing that that's an expectation, right, of the one-on-ones, um, that you can get through an incredible amount of information in a half an hour, right? Um, and so if that's what you have, that's the structure you work to create, that's what is available to you um, to start in this time, 
you can do so much in a half an hour. Um, it comes down to being intentional, setting that clear expectation and holding the folks accountable. Like I, I, we're gonna meet for a half an hour. It's really important that we both come prepared to this time together, right? Um, and again, if you, if you expand it out to an hour, again, it just um, creates even more opportunity to dive deeper into those in one session instead of spread out. So um, that's what uh, I have been doing lately. Um, again, mostly from the feedback that that's what my humans that I get to supervise wanted. So. But I'll also add, like, if even you're like, oh my God, a half an hour, I can't do that. Like, if you can only do 10 minutes per person, just start there. Like, because, and this is another thing that we like, that we will definitely cover in our supervisor summer camp, but we cover in a lot of trainings is developing those habits. Like right now, if you're not having those one-on-ones, you guys are all out of the habit. So if all you can afford is 10 minutes a person, do it, get started. Even if you can only do like one question or one thing, because then it's going to like be part of your routine. And you're like, oh, well, I guess if I'm meeting for 10 minutes, let's make it 15. And then, oh, well, let's make it a half hour. And so you get to the point where you're getting everything that done that you want to. Like be flexible with yourself. Don't be like, oh, if I can't do an hour, then I, I'm just a terrible boss again. And I'll just keep working and feel bad about myself. Like start small and work your way up because it's better to do that than just like not <laughs> meet with your people. Okay. So our last content before we get into the details of the summer camp is we always do this and, and hopefully you can see this. I mean, I don't know why you couldn't, but um, I know you don't have the form, but we want you to think about, because we always like to wrap up our lessons with like, what's our action plan? Because learning is fun, especially if you have learner, but learning without action is just like, you know, something fun we did for a half hour. So let's put it into action. And as someone who has intellection, I know how tricky that can be. And it just stays in your head and goes round and round. But so the first thing we want you to think about is, what stories do you have that are holding you back from better managing your team's performance? And it could be about, it could be some of the things I mentioned, like, well, I, I want them to know that I trust them. So I don't want to like get too much in their business or I'm super worried about being a micromanager. So I just kind of let them run free. And I will say it like back to the strengths thing, like some people like running free and they do really well there, but a lot of people don't. And like, I, I can say personally, like, I used to supervise someone who like run free little lamb and she did great. And I'm like, I was just there, like, what do you need for me? What other opportunities? And then when she got promoted and I hired her replacement, I had the exact same attitude and that poor person needed a lot of structure. And I honestly just, you know, because of a lot of other things going on in the stress and my natural inclination was run free little lamb. She didn't, I did not give her what she needed. And so, you know, keep that in mind. But what stories do you have that might be getting in your way? So that's the first thing. Second thing, what are you gonna do? Like we've, we've spent this fun time together. What are you gonna do? Pick one thing. Like, how are you going to commit to do this? Pick a thing. Okay, and thirdly, and this is a, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like when you make a statement, like this, it makes the chances of like an intention, something, I don't know, it's called something, it's science. Science, science says, if when you're trying to start a new habit, get yourself to do those things, you're like, oh, I've been meaning to do that. If you delineate, what are you gonna do? When are you gonna do it? What is it gonna look like? Because you're trying, you're making it super easy on your brain that's super hyper stressed and not used to doing it. Like you're really telling your brain exactly what you're gonna do to do it. Do to do it? Anyway, so for the next month, I will engage in at least five minutes of performance management with my team during each day by doing blank at this time in this place and using this method. And you don't necessarily have to fill this out right now, but you can, but whatever. Um, but when you do that, it really like, it sets you up for success. So again, and, and the five minute thing, again, goes back to habits. Like consistency is more important than doing something for a long time. So like, oh, I'll just have one big meeting with everybody and we'll talk about expectations once a semester. No, <laughs> that doesn't get you in the habit of anything. Like five minutes a day, two minutes a day even. 
is what's going to get you where you want to be. So either now, when you get a hot second, fill that out because you're going to get the slides and you're going to get this recording. Okay, so drum roll for the, again, like we gave you a lot of information and we, a few people have said, wow, this is great, fantastic. But we want you to actually put these things in action. And we know to do that, realistically, you need more support and you need more than a one hour. You know, there's a few of you, you know, well, I'm a do-it-yourselfer so I can, I can run with this, but other people are gonna need more support. So our summer camp, we're super excited about it because we already took, like we had, we had boot camps. You probably saw some advertisements for them, but it was really, like a really intense two days. So a lot of stuff on already overwhelmed people. So what we've done is we've broken it out into eight weeks. So all of June, all of July. So you get eight weeks of online modules where you can go in, do the homework, watch the videos. I guess this is you doing the homework. You're typing very fast, excellent. And you're also gonna get, in addition to that, nine group success and accountability calls. So basically coaching calls for the group. And we're gonna start on June 1st with the first call. And it's going to be a group call, introduce each other, talk about what's expected and what we're going to do together. And then the next day, we're going to drop the first module. And so every week on Tuesday, we're going to have a group call. The next day, next week's stuff. You also get three individual 30-minute coaching calls with us, one for June, one for July, and one for August or September. So you make sure that you're getting all your questions answered. You make sure you have a plan to actually implement what you're learning because we like, you know, we've been in higher ed forever and we've gone to so many trainings and we thought, oh, this is a good training. It's going to change my life. And it never changes your life because you get back and you talk about it for two days and then it's back to normal. We don't want that to happen. We want this to be a great investment of your time and your money. So we want that support for you. We're also going to give you the new Clifton Strengths Managers Report. They're just, they're dropping it actually on, I think the 28th, is that right, Alicia? So, so. It's, the, it's a new format designed especially for managers. So it's gonna give you even more valuable insights on how your talents can be applied to your supervisor role. And finally, we're gonna have a, a private Facebook group. So you guys can commune, we can have those discussions even when we're not formally meeting or having our, our things. So you guys, you know, cause, oh gosh, when you're so stressed, you just feel like you're alone in it, right? Especially like in COVID, like literally you are alone at your house probably, <laughs> you know? And so having those other perspectives, having like, oh my gosh, my supervisor does this too. I guess I'm not the only one can be so incredibly valuable. Okay. Whew. Okay. So that's all the things, the components of it. And, oh, I've done this in a, the, okay. I'm going to go like, because I did it in a, weird way. Oh no, I have to go back now. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go through these one in one because I, I formatted this super weird and I apologize. It was not intentional. Okay, Alicia. All right. So <laughs> supervisor summer camp, we would love to have you join us as again, we walk through how to do this to really, again, help us as supervisors feel more empowered, to feel more confident, to feel less stressed. So the kickoff uh, will be June 1st with a live call. Um, with the cohort and with Anne and I, again, to set the expectations um, and to start to get to know one another. Um, Sorry, I was typing something in the chat and I, I mean, I was playing it, okay. <laughs> yes, and then when we, Anne went through the bullet of all the things that come along, it's not just um, some online, you know, it's not just an online class, like that's part of it. Um, again, we moved to an online class because uh, research shows that um, spaced learning is more effective than trying to cram everything in, right? We teach students that. So of course, that makes sense. We need to do that with our supervisor um, camp. Um, somebody did ask in the chat if the, if the calls will be recorded. Yes, we will be recording those coaching calls, um, the accountability calls as well, um, because we do know that summertime, there are gonna be folks taking vacation. We fully believe in taking time to rest and rejuvenate. And so we would not want anybody to join us if they were on vacation. So yes, great question. Um, 
absolutely will be recording that. So again, um, like Ann mentioned, um, all of the things that come along with this are our time of those live calls, the online course, um, the uh, Facebook group to be able to ask questions and again, communicate with your cohort, um, those individual coaching calls. If you add all of that up for what we would normally uh, charge, the, the cost is over two grand, um, your price is $5.99. Um, and if you do have a team of folks that you want to um, have join us, we are doing a group discount of 10 folks or more. Um, so you can reach out to Ann or I to talk about that. And then because you're here with us today or listening to this recording, um, if you do sign up by Monday the 17th, this is specifically for you MCCA folks, um, you will also get a free one hour team session for us to come in and work with you and your team um, around kind of whatever it is that you need. If it's the strengths framework, it's it, you know, we, we will work to customize what, um, what you need. And so again, that we have a price for that and that if you do guys do sign up by the 17th, um, you will get that from us for free as well. Absolutely. And there's no code or anything. I will just on Tuesday, go see who signed up and shoot you an email saying you got it. You got your free session, then bam, boom. And I do want to also say, in addition to the group discount, um, I know I talked with one school and she's like, wow, sounds awesome. But it's hard because like finance people are like, to spend last year money, you have to have the thing in hand by the end of the fiscal year. And so it's like rolling over. So if that is you, we are happy to work with you and bill it in two parts. So like some are supervisor, summer camp part one, and then just invoice you for part two, you know, to hit those new things. And that would work out well, too, if you're like, well, I have some money left in the budget, but not that much. Either way, just shoot us an email um, and we are happy to work with you because like we're just so passionate about this. We've been supervisors in this field and we know how rewarding it can be, but also how frustrating. And we really want people to have the support they need to be successful because you guys, you know, we feel bad about ourselves, like we've done something wrong, but the problem is we're just not getting the support that we need to be successful supervisors. So that's what we wanna to bring to you guys. Okay, okay. so let's see. Last page, bibbidi bam boom There's our contact information, um, our website. If, if when you get these, if you click on the, on this link, actually on the slides, it'll go right to our website for even more detailed information. Does anybody have any last questions or anything? We really, really appreciate you guys coming. We know that your time and even more importantly, your mental energy is like very valuable. So, um, oh, the podcast, um, I sent the link in the chat, which should come, which like, if you go to our website, like on this thing, it, there is a page for it, but you can also get it on Apple Music. You can get our Apple Podcast, sorry, um, Amazon Music. You can get it on Spotify and you can get it on Google. Do we provide a credential? Oh, um, you know, I've been meaning to give you some, yeah, like we will, what do you mean by credential? We will absolutely give you a certificate. Um, is that what you mean by credential or, or is it some sort of officials? Oh, perfect. Fantastic. Yes. She just wants a certificate for her wall. Done. Boom. Yes. All right, absolutely. cool. Yes. If you have and any other questions, just shoot us an email. Bim, bam, boom. And I did repost the link in the chat. Oh. Um, Anne had sent it to just the panelists, not to everybody on accident. Oh, sorry. So I don't know what out I'm there. doing. It's all good. Again, it's out there. You can also get it to from all the other places she mentioned. So thank you guys so much for your time today. Yes, thanks everyone that attended. And of course, thanks to our presenters, Alicia and Anne. Um, you're always great to work with. And if any of you were at convention and attended their plan plenary, um, it was amazing as well. We get amazing feedback from both of these presenters. I see more, oh, thank you all, it was, it was helpful. Thank you, oh, hi Oki, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, so thank you both very much. Thank you all that attended. Uh, we will be sending a recording of today's webinar to everyone that registered. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and again, you can share today's experience on social using the hashtag MCCA webinar. Thank you guys both so much for that great discount that you're giving. That's amazing. Um, 
I didn't even know it was coming and now you should have seen my mouth. I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. I hope that everyone takes advantage of that because it is a great value. Um, and who doesn't need coaching like this? I, I just think it's, it's tremendously important. Um, so if no one else has any more questions, oh, this was wonderful. Thanks, Whitney. Um, if no one else has any more questions, I think we can um, wrap this up. Again, I hope everyone has a great day and hopefully we see Ian and Alicia very soon. Definitely. Thanks everyone.